Where are we now? 110.14. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, Chapter 10, entitled Departure of Lord Krishna for Dwarka, text number 14. Nyarunanud Galat Baspa, Utkancha Deva Kisute, Nyaryacha Galanubadram. It is shed banda vastriya. Nyarundan galat baspan. Nyarundan galat baspan. Yeah, that's not so good. O kantya deva kisute. Nirya chagara no badram. It is shed banda vastriya. Because of great anxiety. Devaki Sute unto the son of Devaki. Niryati having come out. Agarat from the palace. Na not. Abadram inauspicious. Iti thus. Shat may happen. Bandava, relative. Striyaha, ladies. Translation. The female relatives whose eyes were flooded with tears out of anxiety for Krishna came out of the palace. They could stop their tears only with great difficulty. They feared uh, that tears would cause misfortune at the time of departure. Purport. There were hundreds of ladies in the palace of Hastinapur. All of them were affectionate to Krishna. All of them were relatives also. When they saw that Krishna was going away from the palace for his native place, they were very anxious for him, and as usual, tears began to roll down their cheeks. They thought at the same time that tears at that moment might be a cause of misfortune for Krishna. Therefore, they wanted to check them. This was very difficult for them because the tears, tears could not be checked. Therefore, they smeared their their tears in their eyes and their hearts throbbed. Therefore, ladies who were the wives and daughters-in-law of those who died in the battlefield never came in direct contact with Krishna 
but all of them heard of him and his great activities, and thus they thought of him, talked of him, his name, fame, etc., and became affectionate also, like those who were in direct contact. Therefore, directly or indirectly, anyone who links, sorry, anyone who thinks of Krishna, talks of Krishna or worships Krishna, becomes attached to Krishna, because Krishna is absolute. There is no difference between his name, form, quality, etc. Our intimate relationship with Krishna can be confidential, confidentially revived by our talking of, hearing of, or, re or remembering him. It is so done due to spiritual potency. Om Ajnati Manandasya Gyananda Salakya Saksyurun Minitam Yena Tasmai Sikure Sri Chaitanya Minandistam Stapitam Yena Bhutare Svayam Rupa Kalamiyam Narati Svapadankiram Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Advaita Gradya Sri Vasari Gora Bhaktavinna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare The ladies in Hastinapur were very fortunate because they had become um, very much attached to Krishna. Some by direct association, some by indirect association, by hearing about him and his qualities and activities. But all were fortunate because all had developed attachment. And in this way, um, the emotions that they expressed were fully transcendental. Um, and tears were flowing from their eyes, but they did not desire those tears because they thought that tears might not uh, bring pleasure to Krishna uh, now that he was leaving and uh, caused some misfortune to him. So they, uh, they tried to check their tears. Um, but c because even above the symptoms of their ecstasy, um, the symptoms of their deep attachment to Krishna, uh, did they care for, for Krishna's welfare? Um, so they were not looking for some ecstasy in spiritual life. Um, they were concerned with Krishna's happiness and that was their only interest. That is truly the, the platform of pure devotional service, um, where we, um, we see the example of Daruka, the chariot driver, who was fanning Krishna and for Krishna's pleasure. But then he became so, so overwhelmed by ecstasy that he was able to, to fan Krishna, by the thought of it that here I am fanning Krishna, and then he developed ecstatic symptoms and he froze on the spot, he couldn't move. Then he condemned these ecstatic symptoms. He says, what is the use of this? Now I can't serve. So, um, he was so absorbed in the service. And that was his great, greatest <coughs> pleasure. That was the greatest mercy. Um, service. And... <coughs> and the pleasure of Krishna, not the pleasure of service. Sometimes we look at, I don't like this service, I don't like that service, because we're interested in the pleasure of service. <coughs> but when we're interested in the pleasure of Krishna, then service may change, but the essence is the pleasure of Krishna. Um, so in this way, we are um, seeing the pure, transcendental platform. Um, the association of Krishna always acts, whether it is uh, whether it is by being with Krishna personally, <coughs> like these these fortunate personalities. Who were they? Uh, who were they 
in a previous life, um, that now they could be in the palace with Krishna in Hastinapur. Who were these, these great souls? Uh, who were they? Um, it is also mentioned in the 10th canto of Bhagavatam, Krita Punja Punja. Uh, that Krita Punya Punja, the cowherd boys were thinking, uh, they were one, they were playing with Krishna, they were picnicking with Krishna, they spent all their time every day with Krishna. And then the cowherd boys for a moment thought, Krita Punya Punja, what pious activities might we have been performed? What benefit? Uh, what is the cause that now we have received this benefit? Uh, we, of course, uh, are equally fortunate, uh, equally fortunate. We are also Krita Punya Punja, uh, because somehow or other we are in connection with the, uh, with the Sankita movement of the Supreme Lord. And the same potency is there, uh, the very same, the same opulence, Golokira Primadana Harinam Sankirtana, the very same spiritual potency is there now. Uh, although when we look at the uh, eternal associates of Krishna, um, they are extraordinary. Uh, they are amazing personalities. One of the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is said, even one of them had the potency to deliver the entire universe. What to speak of many? Uh, but somehow or other, uh, although we may not be of that caliber, although we may be, be dwarfs, uh, it is said that uh, the dwarf is trying to capture the moon. How is it possible? Uh, but by the mercy of Krishna, um, everything becomes possible. So here we are, the same potency that was there at the present, at the time when the ladies in uh, Hastinapur directly saw Krishna. That same potency is there now. Now Krishna is present in the form of his deity. Now Krishna is present in the form of his name. In this way, we're celebrating. In Chaitanya Bhagavat, it is mentioned, it is said that uh, that Krishna appeared in every home in Navadvip. Uh, so that's a little bit uh, uh, in every home. He appeared in the house of, uh, of Jagannath Misra and Sachi Devi uh, as their son in the yoga pit. Uh, there is his appearance place in every home. Yes, he appeared in every home in the form of the holy name. So in that way, uh, Krishna is directly present, and we are also uh, directly getting that full mercy of Krishna, and uh, and also getting getting purified by the same potency, uh, and that same potency uh, will surely awaken, surely awaken attachment to Krishna. Uh, first, maybe attachment to devotional service and because we are conditioned to a particular devotional service but then uh, as we are continuing the particular devotional service that we like then or that we can relate to then after some time we just become attached to Krishna and then uh, whatever whatever it is uh, somehow or other uh, let us serve Krishna, um, because <coughs> everything else is simply starvation. When there's no service to Krishna, what is there? Then life is empty and dry. Uh, then, uh, then there's only illusion. And 
then there's only false promise, uh, false hope, then there's only cheating, then we are cheating ourselves. Kaitava uh, Dharma, yeah, simply the activities of, of karma and jnana, the activities of uh, trying to exploit the material entity, yayedam daryate jagat, to take the, the uh, elements of this material world and try and squeeze some enjoyment for our senses out of them. But meanwhile, the senses enslave us and entrap us as agents of maya. And kamadinam kutida purita duri desam tesam jate mayi na karuna na tapataya. The senses are, have no mercy. They are uh, endlessly driving us, and nothing, nothing is ever enough. Whatever we bring in this way, um, we'll exhaust ourselves completely on the, on the, on, in the attempt to enjoy in the material world. Um, but surrounded by, by mercy on all sides, surrounded by the transcendental mercy of Lord Chaitanya and, and his pure devotees, uh, even extended mercy. Uh, it is stated that uh, Lord Nichananda is more merciful than Lord Chaitanya. Um, and still more merciful are the, uh, are the pure devotees that are the servants of Lord Nichananda. And in this way, uh, mercy multiplies. Uh, that is the amazing thing. Um, it is said that uh, if one distributes the mercy, if one distributes the fruits of love of God, then one will have more and more. Uh, so, in this way, um, the mercy is increasing in this world. Um, because as mercy is touching people, uh, they become transformed. And then they also become carriers of transcendental mercy. So it is very nice. Um, Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Krishna. It is fully potent. Um, and here we see anybody, um, anybody, doesn't matter who, um, anybody can be, um, can become fully transcendentally attached to Krishna and can become swept up in transcendental emotions, um, which is uh, which is pleasing to Krishna, um, because savain pumso paro dharmo yato bhakti radoksha je haitiki apatiyata yatma supasidati. It is said that this pure devotional service, which is unalloyed, haitiki uh, apatiyata, it has. There is no interruption and there is no other motivation. Such pure devotional service, um, in, the, in the translation in the Bhagavatam it says, loving devotional service. Not just uh, devotional service, but here Srila Prabhupada translates bhakti as loving devotional service. Yes, yeah, such loving devotional service can purchase Krishna. Mukti dadati bhakti na karichit. Yes, mukti, liberation. You want liberation? I will give you. You take that, liberation from birth and death. But bhakti, I am hiding. Bhakti. I have no bhakti, Krishna says. Liberation I have for you. No, no, Krishna, we want bhakti. No, sorry, I have only liberation today. Uh, take one, take some liberation. No, no, no Krishna. What are you hiding behind your back? Behind my back? Oh, that! Oh, that! that isn't that bhakti? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, Krishna, that's what we want. We want bhakti. Uh, we give us that. Uh, so, Krishna, Krishna is hiding bhakti, it is stated. And why is he hiding bhakti? 
because by bhakti he becomes purchased. So, impersonal calamity thou has moved, absolute is sentient thou has proved. See, the Prabhupada wrote uh, in the Vyasa Puja offering to his spiritual master. Impersonal calamity is where we kill all, all feeling. It's false. Uh, that is all false. That is all illusion. All personal relationships are false. But actually, relationships are real. That is the proper understanding. So the impersonal calamity, the calamity, a life of denial, a life of, of killing ourselves, that life is, is now, now stopped. Um, absolute is sentient, thou has proved. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has all, also has feelings. Um, Krishna also, uh, when when uh, Hirani Kasipu was uh, harassing innocent Pallad, who was, who was only, only five years old and weak and, and a child, <coughs> and who needed protection. Uh, and, and, and Hirani Kasipu, an extremely huge, powerful demon, ready to kill him, then the Lord... Uh, the Lord became very angry, extremely angry, and showed uh, anger like no one had ever seen, uh, and became a half man, half lion. Uh, very brilliant because uh, he had to he had to uphold the words of Lord Brahma: not inside, not outside, not in the day, not in the night, not by any weapon, etc., not by any man, not any by any animal. So he did that by uh, becoming Nusringadev because he was not man, not animal, killed at twilight, so he didn't kill in the day, didn't kill in the night, that wasn't all. But he also chose this form of the lion, of the half man, half lion, out of anger. Uh, because when you want to express your anger, uh, what better way than do it through a lion form and roar? Uh, roar and he roared, if you know what I mean. It's like, you know, an angry mouse doesn't quite cut it. Obviously, right? <laughs> an angry lion is where you really uh, can can express. So, therefore, he had to be half man, half lion, uh, and with the lion head and also the lion nails, right? to sort of express that anger. So what kind of anger was that? That was very deep, very deep anger. And yet, uh, within a moment, within a moment, that anger was, was checked. Uh, when someone gets very angry, I mean, you know, sometimes uh, you get into a big... Uh, a big argument, and uh, especially in marriage, you know, then you're very close to someone. Uh, then when it it breaks loose, then it gets like uh, quite uh, quite strong, and then you're angry, and then okay, you try to make peace, and then but like, you know, then as the as the making of peace is happening, then they try to get in one more word and then like all the anger comes back up uh, what can be said it says don't stop me again <laughs> so it's difficult to check anger uh, once it's there it's it's like it needs some time to uh, to cool down but the swing they cooled down in one moment in one moment, when Pallad appeared before him. Uh, his anger was so intense that when all the demigods were trying to go in front of him, they couldn't. They were thrown backwards by the power of that anger. And they were very powerful. Even Lord Shiva was like, Phew, 
I mean, this is like intense. No one, Lord Brahma didn't want to go uh, before the Lord. Lakshmi Devi couldn't go. So Lord Brahma then, then said to Pallad, well, you made him appear, so you, uh, you pacify him. And he pushed a five-year-old kid forward, which was quite brutal uh, in a way. Not very heroic, but immediately Shringadev became very calm, very peaceful. Now he became overwhelmed with affection, overwhelmed with, with, with great kindness. And so, and so uh, Absolute is sentient. Um, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is sentient. And, uh, and that is uh, the essence of devotional service. It is, it is the love it, that counts. It is the, uh, the deep, spontaneous desire to please Krishna. So these ladies were so eager, so eager to, to serve Krishna so eager to please Krishna. Yes, they felt immediate great separation that Krishna was leaving because they were very attached to him. Um, but they did not want their tears to in any way interfere uh, with, the, um, with the auspiciousness uh, of his journey. And so they tried to check their feelings. Myam. It's not so easy to become selfless. Um, the Bhagavatam is, is giving us um, this model of these pure devotees. Um, we're seeing here descriptions of men and women. But these men and women are, are all the associates of the Lord. Right? They are by no means ordinary men and women although they act out pastimes where they seem to be like ordinary women and ordinary men. And sometimes we see that some of the personalities temporarily become covered and temporarily become uh, distracted from their, uh, their devotional platform. But then they are protected. They are protected ultimately because of their previous service. It does not go in vain. And because it is not all about the devotee reaching out to the Supreme Lord and the devotee must be perfect. Uh, pure devotional service means one must be perfect. And yet, the living being by nature is infinitesimal is very insignificant and very small. And the illusory energy is the reflection of the unlimited spiritual energy. Therefore, the potency of Maya is very great. There are three energies of the Lord, the Antaranta Shakti, the Tatasta Shakti, the Bhairangi Shakti, the internal energy of the Lord, the marginal energy of the Lord, and the external energy of the Lord. The internal energy, the energy of the spiritual world, the energy of devotional service, all tra transcendence. The marginal energy, the living beings, they can be on the side of transcendence or on the side of, of matter. And finally, the external energy, matter. Um, and it is said that somehow or other, the marginal energy, the living energy, is superior, is superior uh, to the uh, material energy. Then how is it possible that the superior energy can become controlled by the inferior energy? It is said because the living being is infinitesimal, very small, and the uh, and Maya. The external energy is the reflection of the unlimited spiritual energy. Therefore, Maya is also almost unlimited. 
almost. Uh, and therefore, very difficult. Uh, but Daivi is a gunamayi mama maya duracheya mama Just by taking shelter of this divine energy of mind, uh, then one can be delivered from this, uh, from this material energy. So no need to become a great yogi. No need to, to fast and fast and fast. No need to, uh, to sit up to the neck in cold water to meditate or to sit in a <coughs> ring of fire in the summer. Uh, no, no need for all kinds of austerity. Simply, simply uh, hear, chant about Krishna and serve Krishna and automatically, automatically natural love of Krishna is awakened. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadhu Kabunai Shravanani Sudha Chitta Karya Udai In this way, this path of bhakti is the natural path. It is not a, a harsh path, uh, such as the path of impersonalism, uh, which is a, is a much more rigid path, where one has to see all matter as just illusion, and one has to give it up, and one has to turn away from the world. But in bhakti, take, 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 the things of this world and use them in the service of Krishna and everything becomes auspicious. Be a full person with all varieties of feelings and somehow or other no need to oppress any feelings right? but just connect them to Krishna and they'll become purified. Very simple and very sublime. Okay, I'll end. Any questions, any comments? Panchara. You said to not to suppress any feelings. You just ended with that. Yeah. And, and it came to my mind, well, there are certain feelings that don't seem to have much place, like you know, envy of devotees or, or the feeling of wanting to be recognized, or, or a feeling of inadequacy, uh, not from the position of, oh, I'm infinitesimal, but from the position of, I'm not you know, getting enough out of the world. And so these are feelings born out of ego. Mm -hmm. So how do we deal with those feelings? Yeah. The so-called negative emotions, um, mm. the uh, lust, greed, anger, and, uh, and carry on the list, and uh, how to deal with that. The, the real way to deal with that is to, to simply serve Krishna. And by serving Krishna, the, uh, we become purified. Initially, such negative feelings may get in the way, right? but they will be, uh, they will be purified. Practically all feelings can be dovetailed, can be connected with Krishna. Uh, the tendency uh, to praise, okay, we can, to, the tendency to be praised, we can turn it around and start praising right, everyone. Yes, praise others, praise Krishna. In this way, uh, the praising tendency um, is, is, is still there. Uh, so it becomes purified. Um, the quality of envy, um, we cannot really 
utilize envy where we hate and want to destroy. Um, but feelings that are close to that, uh, a sense of competition, that can be there. Uh, we can compete. We can, uh, and we can feel uh, challenged by someone, right? And uh, and when they do better than us, and we can just try and compete and defeat, and that smells a little bit like, like, are you getting envious now? Um, that, but ultimately, one has to learn on the spiritual platform. When someone is doing better than us, when someone is greater than us, all right. If someone serves Krishna better than us, all right, then we help them. Then we help them. We just assist them. As simple as that. That is, a, is, is an adjustment. Right? That step has to be taken. Um, one has to overcome. So there are many things to overcome. Uh, but the process of devotional service is, is, is just automatically balancing all these things out and connecting them all to Krishna. We can help that with a, with a conscious endeavor. But the conscious endeavor is always simply the support. Right? The, we're not going to be able to change ourselves permanently by, uh, by trying through a conscious endeavor to correct all kinds of qualities within ourselves. Yes, yes, ti bhakti bhagavati kinchana sagir guna is tatasami tatrasa masati sara manorati nasati davatu bahi. It is said that whether we are in the mode of goodness, and whether we develop all the good qualities of the demigods by a conscious endeavor. Still, if we're not engaging in devotional service, we'll still be in the chariot of the mind, and that chariot of the mind will take us away from the mode of goodness. Therefore, the conscious effort to just develop qualities seems to work. It seems to help. Huh? It seems that we can check, it seems that we can correct our, our uh, lower nature, our negative emotions. It seems to be so. Uh, but not in a lasting way, unless, unless we engage in devotional service. So therefore, the first and foremost means to balance negative emotions purify them, transform them into positive emotions, is through devotional service. And, and then a conscious effort is an effort of the mode of goodness, which is a support, a support, a supportive element. Thank you so much for this class. So uh, I like one point that uh, what is the use of our lamentation if it doesn't help us serve? And but sometimes we can know it, right? Because we have some kind of knowledge from the books. But uh, even though we understand it, it's very hard to uh, go through some kind of depression or bad feelings, low energy. How to deal with this, even when we understand? That it, it, it doesn't help me serve. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, I use an analogy of of, of the, the tight rope, and that the tight rope is high in the circus, and that is the platform where we are realized. That is the platform where we are operating on attachment for Krishna and so on. And when we're not able to be on that level of the tight rope, one level below is a net, and the net is the mode of goodness. And the mode of goodness is made of like many strands, you know, that all mix together. So it's a whole lifestyle that um, bound by 
certain certain uh, ways of behavior. So it's external, it's not internal, it's then an external system of behavior that helps us to lift ourselves up from lower negative emotions, whether it's depression or excessive anger or hate or whatever, or racism or, you know, uh, I mean, I was looking at the man on the plane as I flew here on the aisle, on the other side of the aisle, and for six hours he played the same computer game, shooting. Yeah? It's like six hours, he's just like, <laughs> just <laughs> shooting different things. Right? Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, what does that do to you when you do that for six hours, just shooting like that? Is it like, oh my God, yeah? Then I sort of, I watched that, six hours he did that, still going, wow. So, whatever that is, it looks to me like a lower state of consciousness, and uh, then there's a code of behavior, of goodness, which is above that. So we try and embrace that, and then we get up to the net, right, at least we're off the ground where we are falling prey to the waves of the modes of nature, to lower emotions and lower drives and, and all these kind of things. And then we're at least on the net. But it's a little tight up there, you know, it's, it's like it's not comfortable walking uh, on that net. It's just uh, because it's all prescribed. You know, all of the act according to duty. <sighs> duty, heavy duty. Right? It's like uh, you want your freedom, and so it's a little difficult. But then once we, uh, from that platform, it's a lounging platform, then there's a ladder that goes up to the, to the rope, and okay, on that cord, that cord of pure love of Krishna, there. Once we are up there, then, then we are free free from this gravity that pulls us down, just up, not like that. Okay, that's an analogy, hope it works. We shall stop. Thank you very much. The power of the key